Hello everyone, Toby from ableitendrama.com here. Let me show you what I got for you using a MIDI controller and using the same dials here for controlling different parameters depending what preset you are selecting. So uh, quickly, let me quickly show you what I mean. So I have this uh, dial 4 here, which is um, sitting on this track here and being received on this Max for Live device. And this is controlling this parameter here. And this parameter is linked inside the device to control the B send here. And now if I switch the preset going to number 2, you can see that it's mapped to a different parameter, parameter A reverb so this is now controlling the a reverb here so if i switch again to preset number one you can see b send is being controlled if i switch to preset number two a send is being controlled so this is a <clears throat> sorry this is a max for life device um, it comes in this layout like one by eight or two by four if you have a different controller where you have four by four the dials or faders it can be used for midi controllers sending midi control change okay let me show you how to set this up so first obviously you need to make sure that your controller is sending into a track in ableton live so for this you need to go into your ableton live preferences and under link midi tempo you want to make sure that your input for track is being turned on so i'm using the x touch mini here so if this one is being turned on you can see that the MIDI from I can select now the X Touch Mini, which is that controller here. Okay, so you want to set your monitor to in to make sure that the MIDI is always being passed through. You are now able to set up the MIDI in. So you want this device here, this Max for Live device, to receive the MIDI. So you have a button here where you can select the MIDI in view, and you can just easily press S here. Obviously, it needs to be turned on, so you need to it's activated per default, but just in case you don't know. So you need to activate this. You press S for syncing or for learning. You move the um, fader or the dial, and it's receiving that MIDI, and it's receiving war on, on which number, MIDI control change number, your controller is sending you only need to set this up once you can save and store this as a preset in your user library and then just recall it so i'm just going to do the first the first four here so if i leave the midi in menu now you can see when i'm moving those it's changing those um, views here of the slider and um, let us clear everything. So for C, you can clear mapping. So I'm now hitting on C to clear the A reverb mapping. I'm going to preset number one. You can go up and down here. You can automate this. I will show you that later. And going to clear the B delay here as well. So now, if you want to do a mapping, you just select the parameter you want to map. So for example, we're going to select the A cent here. And you can see in the window of this device, the map to is switching to the name of the parameter you touched with your mouse last. So B delay is now being selected. So if I select the track volume, it's track volume. So let's do uh, a reverb here now and let's sync and save this mapping to um, my fourth dial here. So one, two, three, four, and I hit save on this particular slot here. Save and a reverb is now saved. And when I now move my dial here, you can see the A send is being controlled. So if you are later in your set or uh, when you're performing live, or if you want to set up those as um, as a default preset here in your in, as a template in Ableton Live, you can do that as well uh, for your workflow for producing. So let's say I'm now in preset number one and I want to control the reverbs. So I can now set up a second preset. So I could map all those eight dials here, for example, and I could now um, select a different preset. I can click on um, up or down here to select the different presets. So now I'm in preset number two and I want the same button to do something different. So let's say I wanted to control 
this track volume fader here. So I touch the track volume fader via clicking um, on it. And I just hit S again for the fourth slot where I'm at. And you can see now the track fader is being controlled. And if I go to preset number one again, the same dial or fader, whatever, sending MIDI CC is um, now controlling the A send, okay? So <coughs> this is quick and easy. And if you are performing, you obviously want, or maybe you want to, this to change automatically. So you can click on selecting a different preset. You can MIDI map this. So I can map this, for example, to whatever makes sense for that. Maybe the button next to it or the dial next to it, I mean. So I move this dial now and I can select the different presets. If you want to um, scroll through presets manually, you can do that this, this way. If you want to change um, automatically, so let's say you have... Um, as um, one song where you want to control this effect and this parameter of this effect and in the next song you want to control a different parameter you can set up automated automations as well so this will work for arrangement view and session view obviously so let's do this first in session view so if we create a midi clip here and then if we go to the envelope view and if we go to advanced midi map dials and we have here the automate preset function. So we can just set breakpoints going over the red line. So for example, let's say we want preset number one here and preset number two here. So I can create breakpoints. I could move them up or down to uh, select the different numbers for the different presets. I always can go right click and edit value as well if I want to use that function here okay cool so now if this clip is playing you can see as soon as it goes to one or two depending on where you are um, in your Ableton live set or what you want to control this will now change automatically so a reverb if now i control a reverb now i control the track volume yeah so that's pretty fast and quick and obviously you want to set this up to not loop maybe and just have the selecting in a scene um, for your place here in arrangement it would look very similar but um, so if we have a look on the track here we need to turn on automation view we go to advanced map midi map the device automate preset and we get uh, we can set breakpoints in here as well so if we go to the red line if we click on the red line and set a breakpoint set a second breakpoint and now let's just have those maybe set like this so you can see now you are able to change preset via automation and you can see the preset is changing here as well so yes this can become very handy so there are a few more functions I want to show you so you know. So for example, um, you want to say, well, actually I have some um, functions here where the parameter shouldn't go um, to from, from zero to 100. In MIDI language, it's actually zero to 127. So if you think about 100%, it's only zero to 127. So the maximum value here, 127, and zero okay so that's 100 percent, and that's zero percent okay so if you say well i only want um some effects to go from zero to 50 percent the middle of 100 um 127 128 steps actually would be 64. so what we want to do here is we want to limit what this a reverb where this how far uh this a reverb can go so what i mean by that is okay so if we limit that from 0 to 64 you can see now if i move my dial that it's only going from 0 to 64 and it stops at 64 yeah so i can um, actually use my parameters here dynamically so let us set something up for the second one in our second preset if we go one preset up we are now controlling the track volume and let's say we want the track volume not going um, over 
like uh, like like full here, we just want to adjust it in between. So let's say maybe from minus 12 up to zero. So I can look always on the values here I'm getting. So zero would be 108, zero dB. Um, and uh, minus 12, if I'm going there, it's 71. So 71, I forget the values already. 71, and let's go up again. Sorry, I need to do this before you do the scaling. So um, 71 up till um, 108. So if you put those values in here now, 71 up till 108. So that's a minimum and the maximum. You might know this. Um, so same like in the MIDI native MIDI map menu in Ableton Live. So now you can see you are going, if I move this down, it stops no matter how far down I go. So if I go even further down, it's not going under minus 12 or in MIDI language um, value 71. If I move this up, you can see it's not going over 0 dB, which is in MIDI language 108. Okay, so just to give you one example here. So those different um, limitations or min and max values of the parameter you're controlling are stored in the preset as well. So if I go to the A reverb here now, if you remember, we managed to put this to 0 up to 50%, MIDI language 64, and we can see that here it's going up to 64. And for the volume, if we now switch the preset here, if we're going to volume now, you can see it's not going further or higher than zero dB, and it's going to minus 12 um, would be the lowest. So for a lot of effects, those things make sense. So that's why I thought I put that one in. Cool. So uh, let's map a different parameter here. So we could actually um, have some global mapping here as well. So if we let's take uh, number three, and maybe let's put this on the master volume. So if we select the master uh, volume here, we um, can store this or save this to the third field here. And if we move that now, you can see it's going up and down. Let's keep that for the whole range, just for showing purposes now. So this is now, the third dial is now controlling that. So if I now change the preset, obviously, um, there is nothing stored in here. So if I want to control, if I want always number three to control the master track volume, I can set this up, I can lock this. So uh, if I go to track volume here again, and if I now hit the lock, I can now always um, control this no matter in what preset I am. You can see you got up to 128 presets here. So no matter uh, in which preset I am, always number three here will control the track volume. Yes. Okay, so um, I just want to be fair and mention because those mappings here um, are set up to parameters in your Ableton Live set, those will only work in your Ableton Live set here. So you can't um, save this one as a preset because um, Ableton Live and Ableton Live's AP API in the background is giving every map parameter its own ID. And those ID are um, specific to your Ableton Live set. So you can save this set now as a preset, as a template, as an Ableton Live template and reopen this up. And this will have all those mappings in there. And then you can start from there building on your um, song or your live performance set. But you can't pull um, the device in. Like this mapping I made here are unique to this Ableton Live set. And I can't just drag and drop this uh, preset here and pull this up in a different Ableton Live said it needs to be start from the beginning, same like MIDI mappings. However, I have uh, two more devices which are using the same technique here, but they are for buttons and um, you can check them out as well. There uh, is a link in the video description here and it has um, a few 
more controls or different controls because um, they are more for triggering actions. So, for example, uh, firing a scene or uh, next scene, previous scene, next locator, uh, tap the tempo, metronome on and off, and so on and so forth. And the global actions, um, which are not specific, so not specific to a scene, not specific to a certain locator, but the global actions would be next scene, previous scene, and uh, tap the metronome, uh, metronome on and off, tap the tempo, I mean, transport on and off, and all those um, um, global actions here, they will be, they can be stored as a preset. So it's the same technique, but for buttons and not for dials, as I said, uh, link in the video description here. Okay, so one more really cool thing you can do here is you can actually set up now multiple um, MIDI controllers, external MIDI controllers to control the same parameters. So this is um, a thing for people when they use um, multiple um, external MIDI controllers and they want to control the same parameters. So let's say, for example, we want to control um, let's take a reverb here. We had this mapped already on this one here. So I just gonna unlock this one here and clean this one just to make sure. So I now I'm controlling a reverb here, the a reverb parameter here. Let's set this up to 127 just to make sure we have this. So I have now a second controller here, a second MIDI controller. So, and just to prove to you as well that this is working with uh, faders here as well. And you can now use different MIDI controllers to map this to the same parameter. That's possible native as well, but you need to set up and you need to reprogram the MIDI you're sending from your controller. And yes, it's possible, but it can be a bit of a Peter because... Uh, if there is an editor at all for MIDI gear, it's usually not only running on uh, Windows quite a lot of the times. Um, um, MIDI controllers, even, especially the more affordable ones, only have editors uh, running on uh, Windows OS. And they need to be set up to the exact channel and MIDI CC value. And that can take some time um, to set things up. This is much more flexible because you can have mappings saved in your set here. So let's open up a new MIDI track. Maybe let's close this one for now. So from the start again, we are now setting up a second MIDI controller here. So we take the um, dials, which is that one here. Ah, I can quickly show you. This is included as well. That would be a two by four layout. And this is a one by eight layout. Both devices are um, included when you buy the dial and fader control advanced MIDI map dial and fader control here. So let's get rid of that one again. Um, yes, dial control 1.8. So we have now a second track with a second um, MIDI controller for a second MIDI controller. That is our first one. Here's our second one. Okay, so let's put this up here. And we now quickly need to set up the MIDI in because I selected um, my in my MIDI preferences to have the nano control as a track in here. Let's quickly show you that again because yeah, it's basic stuff, but it's really important to know. So I have now a second controller called the nano control two from Cork, and we need to set up the track in here. Um, input, nano control, and track input. And I want to have this one active only. So I don't want any control surfaces being activated for the same controller because they could interfere here. And you're doing some custom mappings here, so you don't need scripts. You just and um, want MIDI ports in such mini track on here. You might even want to turn off the remote if you don't need the native MIDI map function enabled in life. Just keep things clean as possible. So now we need to make sure MIDI is coming in and I see MIDI is being received, but it's not being passed through. Now it's being passed through because I set the monitor to in. Make sure to have the MIDI 2 set to no output, just keeping MIDI things clean as possible. It's always good to have the MIDI routing clean as possible because if things are getting more complex, this is 
very often a problem that MIDI is floating around in the background and it's doing something it shouldn't do and my crash Ableton. Okay, so quickly, let us quickly set up the MIDI in now. So I'm receiving MIDI in here now. I have the device on here. I can open up the window. By the way, you can zoom and set the position. You can save the position here. You just hit on save. And if you want to recall the position, you can hit recall and it's jumping to that point as well. And it will open up, Ableton Live will open up and recall the position. You save the window, the size and the position um, as well. Okay, so we have this device in here and we wanna check the MIDI in and set the MIDI in right. So I just press S for the first one. I move the first slider here and it's mapped. I move the next slider here and it's mapped on one. I move the next slider here and it's mapped on two. And let's do one more just to prove how quick and easy that is. And you can see I'm now already able, if I move those different faders, um, they are being received and I can now set my mappings. So my example was, and for that we're gonna open the dial control, the second one we already set up for the bearing X Touch Mini. So this one is controlling, still controlling the A send. And I now want to control the same ascent via a second controller here. Let's say the first fader from my Nano Control 2. So I just need to select the ascent here, a reverb it's called, and press S. And now this one is controlling the a reverb. And this one is controlling the A reverb, okay? So this way you are able to set up um, multiple controllers if you want to, being flexible, controlling different things um, at a different point in your Ableton Live set, or if you have a production template, you can set those up to have like, I don't know, always controlling the A reverbs or uh, different parameters of your set you always need access to here. Cool, so those are Max for Life devices. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite um, and can be bought on as uh, can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. Those devices will work with Ableton Live 10 and Ableton Live 11 as long as you have Max for Life. Okay, cool. Uh, one more thing I forgot to show you. So if you want to set up more, let's do this um, maybe on the uh, for the Nano Control 2. So let's say we have, um, we want to set up the faders, faders and the dials up here and they both should be pre represented for um, the same, uh, on the same track, obviously. So we can just set up a second um, device here. Um, it's usually good to pull um, Max for Life devices from your user library and just don't um, copy and paste them in. It's a little uh, Max for Life thingy in the background where I just feel like um, it's safer to pull them in fresh and not just to copy and paste those. Okay, so let's say we have now two of those in here. We first need to set up the MIDI mapping, obviously, and you can see already um, if I'm moving this here, um, it it's not passing through, it's passing passing through the MIDI, sorry, but um, because it's passing through the MIDI, you can uh, chain those devices as well if you want to. It makes, sometimes makes sense. For this device, it's possible to have MIDI being passed through, but then you need to be really uh, clean with the MIDI mapping. So let's do the MIDI mapping first. So we have the second one here, let's open, uh, let's close the first one. So we want to do the new MIDI mappings here. So I press S and I just move the different uh, dials. No, actually it's, yeah, it's the dials here. And we can see now the dials are already controlling the different fields slots here. So this way I'm already able to set up both of those now. Okay, so quickly, let's quickly do this. So um, let's set up some things here. So maybe let's control the track volume, set this up for this one here as track volume. And maybe let's have on a second one, let's have something else to set up. Let's just take the B cent here as well. I just wanna, don't wanna create a new track here. And then 
let's set something up for this one here as well maybe set up the pan just to give you one example okay so now if i'm in preset number two this one is controlling um this fader here is controlling the track panning and the dial above is controlling the b send if i'm going to preset number one the same parameters are controlling for example the fader is now controlling a reverb send knob and this one is controlling the track volume so obviously i now maybe want to have those two things being bind together the preset selection here so i don't want to like automate every single device here so what i can do now is i could take the two devices and group those so let's group those um command g or right click group so if you have both selected so if i select one i hold shift i select the other one as well so no bow so now both are being selected right click i go to group i have them grouped now and now i want to set up some macro mapping so i want to go to the macro view here maybe let's press minus and just have one dial here so this one dial now needs to be mapped to both of the preset selections here and there is a little thing with mapping things to um, pop-up windows and max for life so you need to open the dial uh, you need to open the window you want to map the parameter on you need to select the parameter here and now you hit map and you map this parameter you leave the map menu you press close and you open you need to open up the window first um, then go to the parameter then hit map again and you're able to map this parameter here as well now you need to open the window select the parameter and then you hit, need to hit map so now what's happening if i have both windows open here you can see you get a little green dot here which shows you there is a mapping present so if i now move the macro map here you can see that the presets um changing for both um devices for both uh, windows here for both mappings for both advanced midi map control devices here so you just need to group those um if you're using the button one the button one is not passing through midi you need to chain those it's all explained in the video if you are for if you're interested in the button ones have a look on those so now i can set up automations or i can set up a midi control or i control the presets by selecting this dial the macro map dial here and go up and down for both presets here okay cool i hope this is gonna make um gonna make things easier and makes your controller more usable even small and affordable controllers are now um being becoming a little bit more interesting i think so so uh have fun um i have lots of max for life devices if you're interested just check out my homepage. and obviously um if you have any questions um, i'm happy to answer those in the comments for example if you're looking for other devices or other solutions for using um, ableton live in a different way have a look on my page abledrama.com cheers bye bye